What do the rich buy that the poor don't even know is available for purchase? You can rent celebrities for your private events. Not just musicians, but bona fide actors and actresses. Super rich guy in Bel Air used to host his kid's birthday party in late October. So they went all out for a Halloween themed party. Everyone at the kid's school was invited, plus their own friends. Each year they'd hire some fantastic athlete to appear at the event. One year it was Tony Hawk. Another year it was some Olympic gold medal gymnastic winners. The one that threw me was when they hired Demi Moore, Anthony Kedis and Benicio de Toro to be guests at the party. To hang out and pretend they were friends with the kid. Mind you this was a kid's Halloween party. Set outside in a huge, massive garden. Spread out over tennis courts and lawns. With games, buffets, dessert tables, taco stands, omelette stands, BBQ, pizza, burgers, etc. No booze, no one allowed inside. All the event staff were dressed in Halloween costumes. It was very cool. But it was sad to see Kedis and the Toro sitting together commiserating. You could see the frick. The things we do for a paycheck look on their faces. They were at a kids party FFS. Demi was very nice. She brought her little doggies. But it was sad to see Kedis and the Toro sitting together commiserating. You could see the frick. The things we do for a paycheck look on their faces. They were at a kids party FFS. Yet, yeah, my heart bleeds for these two millionaires who can command thousands of dollars just to be glorified entertainers at a kids party. A while back some guy on here was talking about his experience working as a sort of personnel manager for a billionaire and how things are just wildly different for them. The specific example he used was how things work when these people want to go on a trip and give any notice at all to their employees. What happens is that an advanced team gets sent ahead by a few days to scope out the rented board location and report back exact dimensions for closet space, drawl space, etc. People back at the home go through the clothing, jewelry, etc, and draw up a priority list which is sent to the advanced team. The advanced team then spends the next two days purchasing the list of items. Entire wardrobes, jewelry sets, makeup kits, bathing supplies, etc. Anything they cannot get, not enough time, or is one of a kind like the family heirloom watch the rich dude wears every now and then, is relayed to the house team. The family's schedule is arranged such that the moment the family leaves the house on the day of travel, a whole team of people rushes through and packs up all the remaining items. Only after the family leaves, you wouldn't want to deny them access to their items for even a few seconds, which are then sent ahead to the airport while the family has a lunch or something somewhere. Upon landing, their luggage takes one route, direct, and the family takes a similarly indirect route, unless otherwise directed. Such that by the time they get to the location all of their items are not just unpacked but in their proper organized locations and ready for use without any of the advanced team ever being visible to the family. What happens when the family leaves the location? The same situation in reverse, but quite frequently all of the repurchased items are just disposed of in some method. It's just easier, if not cheaper, to rebuy them each time the family goes somewhere if they aren't traveling to too many different locations in quick succession. This is some pharaohs of Egypt level crap. How are these billionaires even functional people when literally everything and done for them in life? A person to go to jail for you in your stead. This is a known phenomenon in Latin America but I imagine it happens in other places as well. Certainly amongst the accuser it happens. I knew a guy who did 8 years for his boss and got paid. I don't see it on here, but the vast majority of financial products are out of reach for all but the rich. One reason the rich get richer is that they have access to investments that we've never heard of. Ever seen the big short why do you think Goldman Sachs took a week to correctly price Dr. Michael Burry's housing short position? Because they were securing that position for themselves and their clients. Those financial instruments are so complicated and the regulation on them so Byzantine that it wouldn't surprise me if Goldman actually didn't do anything illegal, like they're allowed, at their discretion, to misprice an asset for a certain period of time. Probably under the guise of the assets being complicated to price, but really it's just a buffer for them to get an edge that regular people couldn't believe. Imagine going to a horse race and being able to bet on the horses near the end of the race. Rich people get that. Private banks. Rich people use banks like Jace. 
but they don't bank through regular branches, instead they use Chase private banking. They never wait on hold for a banker to pick up the phone, they get same day access to their deposits, lines of credit, etc. Deposit $3 million into your checking account and you'll get a call from your bank's private banking group. Private boarding gate at certain airports, complete with showers, a spa, full bar, lounge, food, a bed, gym, sauna etc. Total privacy, your luggage is scanned and taken through security by a concierge, and you're driven to the plane in a BMW 8 series. LAX has them now. Hello, yes, I would like to order some wealthiness just so I can have access to the private boarding gate. Yes, I'll hold, thank you. Actual smart homes. The Alexa Google Home market is bringing it more mainstream, but for decades the wealthy elite have had smart home functionality through companies like Crestron. The controls go far beyond controlling your lights and thermostat, and integrate with more technologies. God dang Crestron brings back nightmares from my AV tech days in college. I had a buddy who hired a driver, got him to get a chauffeur's license and then made sure his Jaguar was long enough to meet criteria as a limo, and then he could legally drink in the back seat. When I traveled with him internationally, someone met us at the door when we were dropped off, and they walked us to our plane. None of that customs security stuff occurred. In Iowa your vehicle doesn't have to meet length requirements. My husband worked with a guy whose wife got her chauffeur's license so he could drink in the back seat of their sedan. Everyone knows about mega yachts, but the very rich also enjoy their own trains, or at the very least private super luxurious train cars. With their budgets it isn't expensive to rent space on freight lines and an engine, assuming they don't own their own. Sometimes a group of friends will hook their private cars together and motor around a continent having a big party. Now I am imagining some fat cat in his luxury train car between a bunch of loads of coal and some hobos in an empty box car. Specialized household staff. When someone is truly mega rich, running their household takes the same complexity as running a small to mid-size company, and management is skilled and compensated accordingly. Don't think butler, think head of operations at a luxury hotel. The staff at household managers oversee can be really specialized as well. For example, Larry Ellison has his own personal curator to oversee his collection of Asian art. They do things like advise on the purchase and sale of arts in his collection, oversee storage and display of art housed on his property, oversee process of lending art for storage and display at museums. The curator will often have their own staff to conduct actual conservation work, art transport, art installation, etc. So if you've already got an in-house crew of 7 people focused on your art collection alone, imagine how big your entire household staff is. That's why you've got a household manager. Just here to say this is very accurate and I have done consultation work for someone in this position in Canada. The home had more contemporary art per square inch than the MoMA. I asked the woman who ran the household if she had a favorite work from the very impressive collection. She told me deadpan, oh no, I hate contemporary art. Something they do that most people don't know about is buy entire libraries at once. My sister used to work at a bookstore, and told me someone came in and wanted to furnish their library with a library size purchase of books. They just wanted cherry picked bestsellers left to the discretion of the people working there. It sounded wild. Some wealthy people also buy books as decoration, with no intent of reading most of them. They buy books from wholesalers by the linear foot, specifying how the books look on the shelves, size, color, material of spine, etc. Without any regard for what the books actually are, they just need to fill wall space in library office rooms in their homes. Private performances with big name artists. I was on a yacht in the Virgin Islands and some mega yacht owner pretty close to us had Christina Aguilera flown in to perform for his guest on the mega yacht. We were close enough to see the performance, not close enough to pretend to be part of the party. I saw an interview with Penn from Penn and Teller talk about doing a private show on a yacht for one of the Microsoft guys. They paid to shut down Fire Vegas show for a week. Flo Penn Teller and their crew to Asia put them up for a week on a luxury yacht and had them do one show for Thaya Friends. T here was a couple of big name bands on this cruise as well. Landing 747s in small airports. 
I grew up around Lexington, KY. The region is huge on horses, particularly thoroughbred horses. The entire city is surrounded by horse farms, and these farms breed some of the best racing horses in the world. The rich and famous will often come here to buy thoroughbreds to add to their breeding stock. One such person is a sheikh from Dubai, I think, who owns his own private 747. Now the local airport isn't rated for 747s, and it's not legal to land one there unless it's an emergency. The Sheikh doesn't care though and lands his 747 there anyways. The airport finds him every time he does this, which he is totally fine with paying. I've been told that many of the upgrades to the airport over the years were almost entirely funded with money from those fines. In London rich people figured out it was cheaper to just park on the streets illegally and just pay the fines every day than to pay for parking in the city. So the city started clamping cars. So the rich people started paying people to go and pay the fine for the car to be unclamped before they wanted to leave. Entire floors of hotels or multiple floors. Entire restaurants. Chefs from literally any restaurant in the world to cook for them, wherever they are. I saw all of those things done by a prince of Saudi Arabia. We estimated it cost him $50,000 just for the one private meal in our restaurant, given that he, one, had the top four floors of our hotel booked, for the hundreds of staff to take care of him, his wife and his two kids, plus likely some concubines, if I'm being honest. As someone in this part of the world, being rich equals the number of people who work for you. 2. He paid $30k just to close our restaurant for one meal. 3. Flew his favorite chef from New York to Orlando to cook for him, on his private jet, and then back again. Of course, it was likely the other private jet he had just for his staff, not for himself or his family. 4. Make food our entire staff, all the kitchen staff, all the federal, state and local security and him, his wife and his two kids. I have posted the entire story somewhere else in the past, but I couldn't find it easily. I had a buddy who taught ski lessons to another Saudi prince's little kid and had some nearly unbelievable and yet similar details during his interactions with them. That kid had an entire team around him or probably 10 staff, plus vehicles, snowmobiles, a helicopter, and so on. I later met a guy who worked on an ultra luxury 300 foot yacht and served Bill Gates and his wife among other super rich people. Their primary job was to operate without interacting with them, or at least as little as possible. This shows you, in some sense, that having people around you doing stuff you need to be done but doing it invisibly is another perk of being rich. Private jet timeshares. For those not quite rich enough for their own private jet, or those rich people wanting to be a bit frugal. More often, it's because they want the option to get different jets. Flying with my wife, small jet will do. Flying 20 of my friends to my island. Luxury ice cubes. Gloss Luxury Ice Co. produces perfectly square ice blocks for minimum dilution and maximum cooling. Hand carved and completely clear, these cubes are sold in bags of 50 and each bag costs $325. That's some BS. How much a drink is cool depends on how large of a surface area the ice cube has and is correlated to the rate at which the ice cube melts and thus dilutes the drink. Either you get minimum dilution by using spherical ice cubes or maximum cooling by maximizing surface area. Both at the same time is just not a thing. You can buy houses ready to move in only with a suitcase. These house are more than fully equipped. Everything is already there like the whole furniture, glasses, knives. Forks, spoons, tissues and toilet paper, towels, toys and games for the children etc. Dinosaurs and artifacts that have not been discovered by science. A huge problem with paleontology in general is that most new discoveries are locked up in private collections with no one being able to study them. Relationships. I once worked at an Olympic horse ranch in Colorado, and the owner was from Seattle and was friends with someone that played guitar W. Kurt Cobain. Then talking to one of the riders, they had been to a party over the weekend that Mark Zuckerberg was at. That's when it hit me, when you're rich, you just know everyone, or know someone that knows them. Six degrees of separation is only for the masses, the elites is closer to two or one. Networking is a powerful thing. And once you make it to a certain tier of people, 
you just know how to get a hold of them or which person you know who does. Unique items. Occasionally you see in the news stuff like hat used in some popular movie auctioned for $80,000 or 5,000 year old Egyptian statue auctioned for $2 million and I think what kind of auction do you even go to buy that kind of thing? Most people do not know this, but you can purchase a 5, 10, and 20 year visa to Thailand called an elite visa ranging in price from 15k USD to 30k USD, with various perks and upgrades, limo service, golf courses, and hotels available. This visa allows you to enter and leave Thailand anytime you want and stay during the duration of the visa. It comes in personal and family sizes. You can't work on this visa, but some lawyers and elite agents can wrangle a work permit with it although most people who have this visa don't worry about working. I'm not rich but due to the fact that my dad was a top level gov official and I went to a very elite private boarding school, I hung out with some fabulously wealthy kids, i.e. rich parents. What surprised me is what a portion of very rich people don't buy I noticed that a surprising percentage of very wealthy people don't buy super fancy cars. For example one family who owned a world famous beverage company all drove around in nondescript SUVs or minivans. Some rich people are extremely flashy but others are almost manic about not being seen as crass, and to those people, a supercar is crass but apparently having a 10 million dollar home in Palm Beach is not crass. Money talks, wealth whispers, edit, thanks kind stranger. At my sister's university, there was an Indian exchange student who grew up in a home full of servants. She often asked my sister for advice on very basic household chores, and apparently she had no idea how to wash clothes. My sister asked how she was even able to show up in clean clothes every day. Apparently she was very fashionable. She replied that she would just keep buying new sets of clothing, and only ever wore each set once before throwing it away. Even if you're middle class in India everyone has at least one part time servant. Standalone ice machines. These are under counter appliances whose sole purpose it to make ice, and not just any ice. The cheaper, $2000 plus, ones make normal crescent shaped cubes, the more expensive one, $3000 plus, make clear ice in cube shapes, and then pallet ice makers, $4000 plus, which is the chibble ice like Sonic has. These are the more entry level models to boot, some break 5 digits. I used to work for a manufacturer of these and at some point a lady was arguing with me because we were shipping a replacement part ground instead of next day air and she made a snide comment about if it were my ice machine she'd bet it wouldn't take this long. I told her, mom, I don't have an ice machine. She snapped back all proud like she'd cornered me with, then how do you get ice? I told her from an ice tray and she replied with, well I don't have to do that. Yeah well for the next 3-5 business days you do be. I do not miss that job at all. Pro tip for those who like Sonic Ice but are short $4000. You can buy it by the 10 pound bag at Sonic for $1.99 and tax. My brother's girlfriend got kicked out of her house and came to live with us. Her family was very poor. Her older siblings had drug problems and her parents drank a lot. When she came to live with us she was absolutely amazed at the fact that we simply had food readily available at all times. Like the fact that we always had food in our fridge. We had food in our pantry at all times and some food storage. Because we stock up sometimes. In our basement. She was blown away by it. I didn't know this until a few years later but apparently she would always sneak food and run upstairs to my brother's room to hide and eat. I guess my dad had found out and let her know that she is allowed to eat anything whenever she feels like it and that she doesn't have to do that. It's been about 5 years now and her and my brother are doing great. She runs her own online business. My brother has a good job and they just bought a really nice house for themselves last month. I'm so happy for her. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video.
bye for now.